Hi, today we're going to have a look at Diff Blue Cover in a CI pipeline. Diff Blue Cover has already generated baseline tests that exist in your repository and are protecting the baseline behavior of your code. When a developer makes a code change and kicks off a PR, all of those unit tests are run, including the developer written unit test as part of the PR. These tell the developer if the baseline behavior has unintentionally changed, requiring a fix. At the same time, diff blue cover is creating unit tests for the changes in this pull request. Now that we have both the baseline tests and the new tests, the developer can examine the difference between them and see exactly what changes in behavior have occurred. Once the dev is satisfied that the behavior is correct, the PR is approved, and the cover generated tests are committed to the code base ready to protect the next PR. So we're going to take a look at this in GitHub and see the workflow from the developer's point of view. First of all, I'm going to show you one of the tests for an example project. Secondly, I'm going to add a new feature and introduce a regression. And then thirdly, I'm going to show you how cover catches the regression and generates unit tests for the new feature. So here we have a small demonstration banking application called Core Banking with a number of basic features for managing accounts, transactions, and other banking functionality. Although relatively simple, this allows me to quickly demonstrate the core concepts, which then scale to the largest and most complex applications. Here you can see we already have tests in place. These are our baseline tests. And here we have account diff blue test. You can see that all of our tests are created with the diff blue test suffix so that they can be distinguished from any existing tests. Here we have a test for the class constructor. You can see that we arrange the test, creating any objects as necessary. And then we go on to generate the assertions. You can see that all of our input values are realistic data, such as real names and realistic looking uh, account numbers. We don't use foo and bar and null strings and zero values. It's really important that a developer can open this test and immediately understand exactly what is going on. Developers don't have time to try and decipher garbage tests to interpret what we're trying to do with this test. Now I'm going to walk through adding a new method and I'm going to accidentally introduce a regression. The test class we just looked at is testing this class, account.java. I'm going to add a new method called get transaction hash. This is simulating me adding new behavior. This method simply creates a checksum for an input, and I want cover to generate tests for this method. I'm also going to accidentally introduce a regression into this method above, take from balance. I'm going to change this minus to a plus, which is going to add to the balance rather than take from the account balance with this method. I want cover to detect this regression and help me pinpoint exactly where to fix it. I'm going to commit the changes, and then I'm going to kick off a pull request. So here you can see the PR checks are kicking off. The initial baseline tests are running, as well as the diff blue cover generated tests for the code changed by this PR. Here we've got a uh, previous run of this that we can look at. So here we've run a GitHub action script that runs diff blue cover. You can see here that cover has analyzed the project to ensure that we are writing tests that match your environment's aesthetic. We've determined what version of test dependencies you're using, as well as that we can run your tests using Maven test. Here you can see that we index the project to discover all of the callable methods. And then cover uses the patch generated by Git 
to tell it only to generate tests for code that has changed due to this PR. This is to ensure that the PR runs quickly, even on the largest code base. Cover uses that patch to not only generate new tests for the account class, but also for all the dependent classes that could be affected by the change. This is something that DiffBlue excels at over a human developer, as we can automatically determine wide ranging impact of changes in other classes or even other modules that the developer may not be aware of. Cover has discovered that 64 methods can be examined in 20 classes. It then works through each class, finding the pathways through the code, creating any mocks as necessary and generating the assertions. Here we have completed the test generation and we get a small report. We can see that we chose not to generate tests for 19 trivial methods. Trivial methods just create lots of noisy tests we always look to create only highly valuable tests that exercise valuable code. Here there are nine methods that we were unable to generate tests for, for various reasons. We always explain to the user what could be done to help us generate more tests, for example, by adding observers, constructors, etc. So in total, we generated 53 tests, which we run through Maven test in your environment to ensure that all of the tests pass in your environment. We need all of the tests to pass so that we can then detect behavioral change from this baseline in the future. So let's go to a PR that has uh, completed previously. So you can see here that the existing tests failed and this means that the overall project behavior has changed. And this is expected because I added that regression that we saw earlier. You can see that DiffBlue has pushed a commit with the new baseline tests in. And then you can see that DiffBlue runs those baseline tests and we see that now the baseline is passing, meaning that we've been able to describe the new behavior. So what the developer can now do is they can look at the changes to the DiffBlue generated test in the context of their source changes. So here on the left hand side, we've got the uh, code base prior to this PR and on the right hand side, we've got the changes. Let's go down to line 112 here. You can see the source change here where I added the new functionality, but the developer may miss this regression where we change the minus to the plus. So how do we catch this? So if we go down to the test class, for this, we can see here on line 57 that the, the test for um, this class has changed. We can see that on the left hand side, we were asserting that after the method has been called, that the balance is zero, whereas now the assertion has changed so that now the balance is 20. This is unexpected to them. This is not something the developer anticipated because the developer didn't believe that they changed a method that should change the account balance. So the developers now got a hint that something's wrong. We can also go down to this other test class. So this is a different uh, a test classing, a different testing, a different class altogether. So you can see here that we've got another test that has changed. Previously, the balance here was 11, but now it's changed to nine. Again, the developer can look at this and they can see that something's not right. They weren't expecting this change and that they need to investigate further. The developer can use these two test changes to quickly see that they must have made a mistake and quickly be able to pinpoint through their source diff that it must have been caused by this accidental regression. So as well as generating tests for the uh, previous and new behavior of the current methods, we also want to generate tests for this new functionality. So you can see here in the test class that we've created a new test for this method for, called test get transaction hash, which the developer can now inspect to ensure that their behavioral intent has been met. This test describes the behavior of the method that they implemented. So they can quickly look at this test and ask themselves, if the test behavior looks correct, then 
their initial intent is also going to be correct. So now with this whole PR, the developer can fix the regression and any other issues that they find. The checks are performed again, and once resolved, they can finalize their PR. So we can see now how Diff Blue Cover has protected this baseline behavior, as well as demonstrating the end-to-end -end workflow of how we catch regressions and how we generate new tests to validate new behavior, as well as showing how it can highlight far-reaching effects of changes across the project. In this case, we saw a test change in a completely different class that wasn't expected. I hope this thoroughly explains how we work in a uh, CI pipeline and how using a CI pipeline across your entire code base can not just protect current behavior, but can also validate new behavior.